Happy boy. Where's the rest of this story? Morning Post. Morning Post. City desk. Just a moment. Now connect you. Moment, please. Anybody asking me? I'm down the floor. Morning Post. Okay, Jean. Morning Post. Elevator. Call down. Down. Hello, Lee. Oh, hi, Skinny. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Maisie. Hello, Lee. How are you? Tell me, is the Lord of the Universe in? Yes, he's in. In a bad humor. Somebody must have stolen the crown jewel. Shall we announce you? Oh, no, no. I'll blow my own horn. He's in, Ruth. You better wait here. I'll be back in ten minutes. Even ten minutes is a long time to be away from you. What did you say? Huh? What? Go on. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Oh, I just said even ten minutes is a long time to be away from you. I heard you the first time. I like it. That's why I asked you to say it again. <laughs> I can stand being spoiled a little. The gentleman I'm going in to see did very little spoiling. Yeah, I'd like to spoil him just once. Sure you don't want me to go in with you? Oh, no, I can handle it. Well, things get rough. Remember, I'm here. I'll come a-running, partner. Well, hello, Jim. Well, hello, hello Hildy. How are you? Hi, Hildy. Welcome yeah. back. Hello, Hildy. How have you been? Hi, Hildy. Hi, Hildy. Hi, Hildy. Hi, Hildy. Hello, Beatrice. How's advice for the love lawn? Fine. My cat just had kittens again. Their own fault. Yeah, hello, Hildy. Glad to see you back. Glad to see you. Yeah. What? Hi, Jim. Yeah. you still around? Oh, hello, Hildy. All right. A little more around the chin, boys. What do you want? Your ex-wife is here. Do you want to see her? Well, well hello, Hildy. Hello, Walter. Hi, Hildy. Oh, hello, Louie. How's the big slot machine king? Oh, I ain't doing that no more. I'm retired. You know what I mean? Say, Walter. I'm busy, Duffy. Oh, hello, Hildy. Hello, Duffy. Listen, Walter. You're going, I'm busy. I thought you ought to know that the governor didn't sign that reprieve. What? And tomorrow morning, Earl Williams dies and makes a sucker out of us. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you going to do? Get the governor on the phone. I can't. Why not? Can't locate him. He's out fishing. How many places to fish are there? Well, at least two, the Atlantic and Pacific. All right, that simplifies it, doesn't it? Oh, Get yeah. him on the phone. Uh, and tell him what? Quiet, Duffy. He's thinking. Tell him if you reprieve Earl Williams, we'll support him for senator. What? Tell him the Morning Post to be behind him, hook, line, and sinker. But you can't do Why that. Why not? Though? Because we've been a Democratic paper for over 20 years. All right. After we get the reprieve, we'll be Democratic again. Oh, Walter. Now go on, Duffy. Get going. Remember, the Morning Post expects every city editor all to right. do his duty. All right. all you too, Louis. Get out of here. Okay, boy. <laughs> Well, Walter, I see you're still at it. Uh, it's the first time I ever double-crossed the governor. What can I do for you? Well, would you mind if I sat down? There's been a lamp burning in the window for you, honey. Here. Oh, I jumped out that window a long time ago, Walter. <laughs> oh, may I have one of those? Sure. And the match. Thank you. Well, well. How long is it? How long is what? You know what? How long is it since we've seen each other? Oh, well, let's see. Uh, I spent six weeks in Reno, then Bermuda. Oh, about four months, I guess. Seems like yesterday to me. Maybe it was yesterday, Hildy. Been seeing me in your dreams? No, no, Mama doesn't dream about you anymore, Wally. You wouldn't know the old girl now. Ah, uh, yes, I would. I'd know you any time, any, any place. place any... Anywhere. Ah, oh, you're repeating yourself, Walter. That's the speech you made the night you proposed. Yeah, I know that you still remember it. Of course, I remember it. If I didn't remember it, I wouldn't have divorced you. Yeah, it's all I wish you hadn't done that, Hilly. Done what? Divorce me. Makes a fellow lose all faith in himself. Gives him a... Almost gives him a feeling he wasn't wanted. Oh, now, look, Junior, that's what divorces are for. Nonsense. You've got an old-fashioned idea. Divorce is something that lasts forever, till death do us part. Why, divorce doesn't mean anything nowadays, Hildy. Just a few words mumbled over you by a judge. We've got something between us. Nothing can change. Mm, well, I suppose you're right in a way, Walter. Sure, I'm right. I am fond of you, you know. And a girl? I often wish you weren't such a stinker. Yeah. Latin, I suppose. You must come up and meet my mother. She'd then like that. Then why on earth phrase. did you promise not to fight the divorce and do everything you possibly could to gum up the whole works? Well, I meant to let you go, Hildy, but you know how it is. You never miss the water till the well runs dry. Oh, a big, fat oh. lummox <laughs> like you, hiring an aeroplane to write. Hildy, don't be hasty. Remember my dimple, Walter. Delayed our divorce 20 minutes while the judge went out to watch it. Well, I don't want to brag, but I've still got the dimple and in the same place. Look, Hildy, I only acted like any husband who didn't want to see his home broken up. What home? What home? Don't you remember the home I promised you? Sure I do. 
That was the one we were to have right after the honeymoon. <laughs> that honeymoon. Oh, was it my fault? Did I know that coal mine was going to have another cave in? I intended to be with you on our honeymoon, Hildy. Honest, I did. All I know is that instead of two weeks in Atlantic City with my bridegroom, I spent two weeks in a coal mine with John Krupski. You don't deny that, do you, Walter? Deny it? I'm proud of it. We beat the whole country on that story. Well, suppose we did. That isn't what I got married for. Oh, what is the good of... Look, now, look, Walter. What I came up here to tell you is that you must stop phoning me a dozen times uh -huh. a day, sending me 20 telegrams. I write a beautiful telegram, don't I? Everybody says so. Are you going to listen to what I have to say? Look, look, what's the use of fighting, Hildy? I'll tell you what you do. You come back to work on the paper. What? If we find we can't oh. get along in a friendly fashion, we'll get married again. What? Certainly, I haven't any hard feelings. Oh, Walter, you're uh, wonderful in a loathsome sort of way. Now, will you please be quiet just long enough for me to tell you what I came up here to say? On, you have and you I have a lunch date everything. already. Break I cannot break it. Will you take on. your hands off me? What are you playing, uh, osteopath? Temper, temper. Oh, listen, Walter. You are no longer my husband and no longer my boss. And you're not going to be my boss. What's that supposed to mean? Just what I say. You mean you're not coming back to work on the paper? You are right, Mr. Burns, for the first time today. Uh, uh, got a better offer, huh? You bet I've got a better All offer. All right, go on, take it, work for somebody else. That's the gratitude I get. Oh, I wish you'd stop What were you when hanging. you came here five years ago? A little college girl from a school of journalism. I took a doll-faced hick. Well, you wouldn't take me if I hadn't been doll-faced. Oh, why should I? I thought it'd be a novelty to have a face around here, a man could look at, but I was shuddering. Listen, Walter. Listen, please. I made a great reporter out of you, Hildy, but you won't be half as good on any other paper, and you know it. We're Honey, a team, and that's what we are. You need me, and I need you, and the paper needs me. Sold, American. Oh, all right, go ahead. Listen, Walter, please. Mm -hmm. The paper's going to have to get along without me. So are you. Just didn't work out, Walter. Well, it would have worked out if you'd been satisfied with just being editor and reporter. But not you. You had to marry me, spoil everything. I wasn't satisfied. I suppose I proposed to you. Well, you practically did, making Google eyes at me for two years until I broke down. Oh, Walter. And I still claim I'm as tight the night I proposed to you. If you'd have been a gentleman, you'd forgotten all about it, but not you. Why, you... Oh, you're losing your eye. You used to be able to pitch better than that. Hello? Yeah? What? Sweeney? Well, what can I do for you? What? Wait a minute. I'm not Sweeney. I'm Duffy. Listen, Sweeney, you can't do that to me. Not today of all days. Uh, wh what's the matter with you? Are you loony? Jumping, Jehoshaphat. Now, listen, Sweeney, this is no time... Oh, all right, I suppose so. Yes, if you have to, you have to. He had to. How do you like that? Everything happens to me. 365 days in a year, and this has to be the day. What's the matter, Walter? Sweeney. Dead? Oh, he might just as well be. The only man on the paper that can write, and he picks the day to have a baby. Well, he didn't do it on purpose, did he? I don't care whether he did or not. He's supposed to be covering the Earl Williams case. And where is he? Walking up and down in the hospital. Is there no sense of honor in this country? Oh, well, haven't you got anybody else? No. No, there's nobody else on the paper that can write. This will break me, unless... Hildy. No. Hildy, you've got to help me out. Just this no, Bob, please, please, will you get going? Get out of here, Duffy. I'm busy. No, look, Hildy. Oh, please, save look, your breath. This will bring us back together again, just the way we used That's to be. That's what I'm afraid of any time, any place, anywhere. Oh, don't mock me. This is bigger than anything that ever happened to us. Don't do it for me. Do it for the paper. Scram, Svengali. If you won't do it for love, how about money? Forget the other offer. I'll raise you 25 bucks listen a week. Listen to me, you great big bumble-headed bad boo. 35 bucks and not a cent more. Well, are you going to listen? Well, good grief. How much is that other paper going to pay you? There isn't any other paper. Oh, well, in that case, I'll raise it off. You go back to your old salary and like, how do you like that? Trying to blackjack me. Well, I want to show you something. I'm it's busy. here. It's a ring. Take a good what? look at it. Do you know what? what it is? It's an engagement ring. Engagement ring? Uh-huh. I tried to tell you right away, but... You would start reminiscing. I'm getting married, Walter, and I'm also getting as far away from the newspaper business as I can get. What? <laughs> I'm through. You get married all you want to, Hildy, but you can't quit the newspaper business. Oh, well, why not? I know you, Hildy. I know what quitting would mean to you. Well, what would it mean? It would kill you. <laughs> you can't sell me that, Walter Burns. Who says I can't? You're a newspaper man. That's why I'm quitting. I want to go someplace where I can be a woman. You mean be a traitor? A traitor, a traitor to what? A traitor to journalism. You're a journalist, Hildy. A journalist? Now, what does that mean? Peeking through keyholes, chasing after fire engines, waking people up in the middle of the night to ask them if Hitler's going to start another war, stealing pictures off old ladies? I know all about reporters, Walter. A lot of daffy budinskis running around without a nickel in their pockets, and for what? So a million hired girls, most of wives, will know what's going on? Why, I... Oh, what's the use? Walter, you, you wouldn't know what it means to... Well, want to be respectable and... Live a halfway normal life. The point is, I, I'm through. Where'd you meet this man? Bermuda. Rich, huh? Well, he's not what you call rich. Makes 
Or 5,000 a year. What's his line? He's in the insurance business. Insurance business? Uh-huh. Well, that's a good honest business, isn't it? Oh, certainly is honest. It's also adventurous. It's romantic. Listen, Hildy, I can't picture you being surrounded by policies, <laughs> policies to the right of them. Policies I can, make sense. I can, and I like it, what's more. Besides, he forgets the office when he's with me. Oh. He doesn't treat me like an errand boy either, Walter. He treats me like a woman. It does, does he? Mm -hmm. How did I treat you? Like a water buffalo? I don't know from water buffaloes, but I do know about him. He's kind and he's sweet and he's considerate. Mm -hmm. He wants a home and children. <laughs> Sounds more like a guy I ought to marry. What's his name? Uh, Baldwin, Bruce Baldwin. Baldwin, Baldwin, Baldwin. Oh, I knew a Baldwin once. A horse thief in Mississippi. Couldn't be the same fella, could it? No. <laughs> You're now talking about the man I'm marrying tomorrow. T tomorrow? As soon as that? Mm-hmm. Well, at last I got out when I came up here to tell you. Guess there isn't any more to the story. That's so long, Walter. So long, Hildy. And better luck to you next time. Thanks. Oh, Hildy. Huh? Uh, well, it is. Kind of took the wind out of my sail. Look, honey, I just want to wish you everything I couldn't give you. Oh, thank you, Walter. This other fellow, I... Well, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see him. I'm more or less particular about whom my wife marries. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, he's right on the job, waiting for me out there. Ah. Do you mind if I meet him? Oh, no, Walter. It wouldn't do any good, really. Oh, no, you're not afraid, are you? Afraid? Of course not. Well, then, come on. Let's see this paragon. Is he as good as you say? Oh, he's better. Well, then, what does he want with you? Oh, now you got me. Thank you, Mr. Mildred. Oh, oh, I am sorry, Hildy. I suppose Bruce, uh, what's his name? Baldwin. Baldwin. I suppose he opens doors for you. He huh? does. And when he's with a lady, he takes his hat off. Oh, I am sorry. And when he walks with a lady, he waits for her. Oh, well, in that case. Allow me. Well, I can see right away my wife picked out the right husband for herself. How do you do, sir? Must be some mistake. I'm already married. Already married? Oh, Hildy, you should have told me. Well, Baldwin. congratulations again, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, no, <laughs> Mr. no. My name oh, excuse is... me, will you? I'm terribly busy. Just leave your card with the boy. What did you say, Mr. Baldwin? Mr. Burns. My name is... Mr. Burns. Some other time, I'm busy with Mr. Bruce Baldwin here. I didn't but hear what you said, Mr. I was going to say that my name Now, look, what is it with you? I'm Am Bruce I? Can't Baldwin. you see that? Oh, you're Bruce Baldwin? Yes. Well, who is he? Uh, who are you? My name's Pete Davis. Well, Mr. Davis, is this any concern of yours? Oh, no. Well, from now on, I thank you to keep your nose out of my affairs. Yes. And well, don't let it happen again, that's that... all. Mr. Baldwin, I'm terribly sorry about this mistake. This is indeed a pleasure. Oh, that's wrong, isn't it? <laughs> well, Bruce, you see, I thought... You don't mind if I call you Bruce, do you? After all, we're practically related. Oh, no, not at all. You see, my wife, that is your wife, I mean, Hildy. Oh, Hildy, you know, you led me to expect you were marrying a much older man. Oh, really? Oh. What did I say that led oh, you to expect Oh, that... don't worry about it. I realize you, you didn't mean old in years. <laughs> You always carry an umbrella, Bruce? Well, uh, it looked a little cloudy this morning. That's right. Rubbers, too, I hope. Hello, boy. A man ought to be prepared for any emergency. Well, Walter, I think we'd better be running along. Yes, we'd better be going. Where are we going? Well, I'm taking you two to lunch. Didn't you tell him, Hildy? No, she didn't. Well, I guess she just wanted to surprise you, Bruce. After you. <laughs> After you, Hildy. Wasting your time, Walter. Won't be a bit of good. No, no. I'm glad to do it. Glad to do it. Hello, Gus. Well, don't tell me it's you, Hildy. It's none other. How have things been? Oh, I can't complain. Well, I can't. I'm hungry. Get me a roast beef sandwich. Rare on white... Oh, oh sorry. On white bread. Got over there, Bruce. That's right here. And you, Hildy? Oh, I'll have the same, I guess. Are you, sir? Yes, that's all right for me. Bring some mustard, too, Gus. Yes, sir. Ah, well, well, well. <laughs> so, uh, you two are gonna get mad, huh? <laughs> Uh, how's it feel, Bruce? Feels awful good. Yes, sir. Well, you're getting a great little girl for yourself. I realize that. Things have been different for me ever since I met Hildy. I've never met anyone quite like her before. Everybody else I've ever known... Well, you could always tell ahead of time what they were going to say or do. But Hildy's not like that. Huh? You can't tell that about her. That's nice. Yes. Well, you're getting something else, too, Bruce. You're getting a great newspaper man. You know all kids, Walter. One of the best I ever knew. Sorry to see her go. Darn sorry, Hildy. I'd like to believe you meant that. Well, I do mean it. Listen, if you ever want to come back to the newspaper business... Which I, I won't. Mm. Oh, well, in spite of everything, if I ever do, there's only one man I'd work for. 
I bet your life I'd kill you if you ever worked for anybody else. <laughs> now, you hear that, Bruce? That's my diploma. It must be quite a business if it's... Hildy, hmm? are you sure you want to quit? Now, Bruce, what do you mean? Well, I mean, if there's any doubt about it, or if there's anything that... No. This is your chance to have a home and to be, like you said, a human being. And I'm going to make you take that chance. Certainly. Why, I wouldn't let her stay. No. No, she deserves all this happiness, Bruce. All the things I couldn't give her. Yeah, all she ever wanted was a home. Well, I'll certainly try to give her one. I know you will, Bruce. Where are you going to live? Albany. Albany, huh? Got a family up there, then? Oh, just my mother. Just my mother, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to live with your mother? Well, just for the first year. Oh, well, that will be nice. Yes, yes. A home with mother. In Albany, too. Mighty nice little town, Albany. They've got the state capital there, you know. Yeah, I know, yeah. Well, we were there once. <laughs> Listen, will you ever forget the night you brought the governor back to the hotel? You see, I was in taking a bath when I came walking out without... <clears throat> uh, she didn't know I was in town. Well, uh, uh, Bruce, uh, how is business up there? Any better? Well, Albany's a mighty good insurance town. Most people there take it out pretty early in life. Yeah, well, I can see why they would. Statistics show that most of our policies... You know, Bruce, are... I've got a feeling I ought to have taken out a little insurance. Of course, that really doesn't matter now that Hildy and I have, uh, well, you know, we've, uh, does it? What does it? What do you think? Still, at that, it might have been a good idea if we, if I had taken a little insurance. Well, I honestly feel that yeah, way. Yeah, I think so. I figure I'm in one business that really helps people. Yeah. Of course, we don't help you much while you're alive, but afterward, that's what counts. Sure. <laughs> I don't get it. Ouch! Nice going. I, uh, so sorry, Gus, my foot must have slipped. Oh, that's all right. Uh, what would you like to drink? Coffee, Gus. Shall I put some rum in the coffee? It's a nasty day. Sure. Oh, me too, Gus, please. And you, sir? Uh, not for me, thanks. Go on, Bruce. Have a No, I have a lot to do this afternoon. Well, I have to buy the tickets and check the baggage. Well, do it tomorrow. There's plenty of time. Well, we're leaving today at 4 o'clock, taking the sleeper for Albany. Oh, you, uh... You're leaving today at 4 o'clock, <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's only two hours. That it doesn't, doesn't give as much time as that. No, and I've got a lot to do. I want to get to the office. Oh, look at that, and that's silly. All down over my front. Oh, that's nothing new here. Oh, never, no, never mind. Okay, Gus. Hey, Gus. Gus, do something about this, will you? Call me to the telephone as soon as I get back to the table. Sure. Thanks, Gus. That's fine. Hey, it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> I'm terribly sorry about that. That's silly, wasn't it? Listen, Bruce, I, uh, let me get that straight. I must have misunderstood you. You... You mean you're taking the sleeper today and then getting married tomorrow? Oh, well, it's not like that. Well, what is it like? Oh, poor Walter. He'll toss and turn all night. Perhaps we'd better tell him Mother's coming along, too. Mother? Well, your mother kicked the bucket no, about No, my you. mother. My mother. Oh, your mother? Oh, well, that relieves my mind. It was cruel of us to let you suffer that way. Isn't Walter sweet? Always wanting to protect me. Well, I, I admit I wasn't much of a husband, but you can always count on me, Hilly. I don't think she'll need you very much, Mr. Burns. I aim to do most of the protecting myself. Mr. Burns, uh, telephone. For me? Yes, sir. That's uh, strange. Uh, pardon me. You know, Hildy, he's not such a bad fellow. No. He should make some girl real happy. Mm -hmm. Life happy. He's not the man for you, I can see that, but I sort of like him. He's got a lot of charm. Well, he comes by it naturally. His grandfather was a snake. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey, Duffy, listen. Is there any way we can stop the 4 o'clock train to Albany from leaving town? We might dynamite it. Could we? Oh, well, maybe we couldn't. All right, now, get this. Get hold of Sweeney and send him out of town on a two-weeks vacation right away. All right, keep your shirt on. Hilda's coming back. No, she doesn't know it yet, but I promise you she's staying here. And listen, tell Louie to stick around the office. I may need him. Goodbye. Thanks, Gus. Oh, this is bad business. What's the matter, Walter? Oh, the Earl Williams case. Oh, yes, I've been reading about that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What is the lowdown on it? Oh, simple, honey. Poor little dope who lost his job and went berserk and shot a cop who was coming after him to quiet him down. Now they're going to hang him tomorrow. Oh, what Your a shame. paper, uh, you've been taking his side, haven't you? Mm hmm. Well, if he was out of his mind when he did it, why doesn't the state just. Put him away. <laughs> because it happened to be a colored policeman. You know what that means, Hildy. Mm -hmm. The colored vote's very important in this town. Yeah, especially with an election coming up three that or four mayor. days. <laughs> He'd hang his own grandmother to be reelected. Well, I should think you could just show that the man wasn't responsible. Mm, that's not so easy. Mm, maybe it isn't so hard, either. Why, what do you mean, Hildy? Well, don't they have to have another expert examine him before they hang him? Sure, a bird named Egelhoff is going to do it. Well, he'll say the same as all the rest. Suppose he does. Well, uh, what's your scheme, Hildy? Look, Walter. 
You get the interview with Earl Williams. Uh -huh. Print Egelhoff her statement. Yeah, yeah. And right alongside of it, you know, double column, uh -huh. run your interview. So, Alienist says he's sane. Interview shows he's goofy. Oh, Hilda, you could do it. You could save that poor devil's life. Uh, you could. Uh, no, no. Uh, you're going away, I forgot. That's right. Uh, how long would the interview take? Oh, about an hour for the interview, another hour to write it. That's about all. Hildy, we could take the six o'clock train if it'd save a man's life. No, Bruce. If you want to save Earl Williams' life, you write the interview yourself. You're still a good reporter. Oh, Hildy, you know I can't write that kind of thing. It takes a woman's touch and needs now, that hard. Now, don't get that, poetic, that... Walter. Get Sweeney. He's the best man you've got on the paper for that sob sister stuff. Poor Sweeney. Duffy just told me his wife finally had twins. Isn't that terrible? Well, Sweeney went out to celebrate, and now we can't find him anymore. So, Sweeney has twins, and Earl Williams gets hanged tomorrow. Now, Walter, look, it isn't... Well, you argue you... with her. You argue with her. Otherwise, you're going on a honeymoon with blood on your hands. How can you have any happiness after that? <laughs> All through the years, you'll remember that a man went to the gallows because she was too selfish to wait two hours. I tell you, Bruce, Earl Williams' face will come between you on the train tonight and at the preachers tomorrow and all oh, the rest stop, of your lives. Stop, Hilda. Oh, please, we'll stop, hear you. What? what a man. Uh, huh? I just remembered Sweeney was only married four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Hilda, you wait. I'm licked. Then Mrs. Sweeney didn't have twins. <laughs> hmm. No, indeed. The twins were Walter's, all his. Oh, it was nothing. Well, come on, let's forget it. Yeah, we'll start all over again. Now, I'll offer you two a business proposition. We're not interested. Well, you'll be interested. Now, you're a smart Don't young man. Don't listen to him, Bruce. I know him of all. From Excuse way back. Excuse me, and he never will you? I'm talking to him. Now, look, Bruce. You persuade Hildy to do the story, and you can write out a nice fat insurance policy for me. What do you say to oh, that? Oh, no, no, no. Now, come on, Bruce. No, I wouldn't use my wife for business purposes. Wait a minute, Bruce. Walter? How big a policy? Oh, 25,000, 50,000. What's the commission on a $100,000 policy? Around $1,000, but he'll What's wrong with $1,000? Well, I couldn't We could it. use that money, Bruce. How long would it yeah. take to get him examined? Well, I could get a company doctor here in 20 minutes, well, but I don't like you the idea. Of this. All right, Bruce. Suppose you have Mr. Burns examined over in his office and see what they'll allow on that old carcass of his. If his... Say, I'm better than I ever was. How do you There's like... never anything to brag about. Now, look, Bruce. I'll go back and change and dress, and after you get the check, you phone me. I'll be in the press room at the criminal courts building. Oh, Walter. What? By the way, I think you better make that a certified check. What do you think I am, a crook? Yes. No certified check, no story. Get me? It'll be certified. Want my fingerprints? No, thanks. I've still got those. Gus, how much do I owe you? Thank you, dear. Oh, Bruce. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. How much money have you got with you? You know, everything we have, $500. Give me the 500 But I have to buy the tickets. I'll buy the tickets. But I should Believe me, dear, I know what I'm doing. He'll get you in a crap game or Hilly, something. I don't gamble. But I know a lot of people that never did anything to met Walter Burns. Please, dear. <laughs> all right, but remember, it's everything we have in the I world. Know, I know. Oh, Bruce. Uh, you got to change of 10. Uh, I just... See what I mean, don't you, Bruce? <laughs> hmm? I just gave everything I had to Hildy. All I've got left. Oh, come on, Hildy. Not me. Sign it. Oh, all right. For the waiter. <laughs> Come on, Bruce. Really. I'm looking for a dime. I'm in. I'll stay. Right. Wilcox, three, four hundred. I'm in. Two. Say, take that one of you birds, will you? You ain't doing anything, Ernie. I'll take two. And uh, one's with a deal, man. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? Crippled or something? I'll just put twice. Press room, huh? I'll see. Wait a minute. Hello, Sarge. McHugh talking. Hold the line, will you? What? Hello. No, I told you this is the press room in the criminal courts building. Oh, Jake, new lead on the hanging. This alienist from New York, Dr. Max J. Egelhofer. Uh, Egelhofer. Yeah, he's going to interview Williams in about half an hour in the sheriff's office. That must be about the 10th alienist they've put on Williams. <clears throat> if he wasn't crazy before, he would be by the time 10 of those babies got through psychoanalyzing him. Uh, give me is the it, desk. Is this guy Egelhofer any good? Figure it out for yourself. He's the guy they sent to Washington to interview the brain trust. I mean... He said they were saying. Here's the situation on the eve of the hanging. I'll pick up a little fudge. Uh, this is Murphy. More slop on the hanging. A double guard has been thrown around the jail, municipal buildings, railroad terminals, and elevated stations to prepare for the expected general uprising of radicals Ready? at the hour of execution. Uh, the sheriff has just put 200 more relatives on the payroll to protect the city from the Red Army, which is leaving Moscow in a couple of minutes. Trouble is, when the real Red Menace shows up, the sheriff will still be crying wolf. What do you got? 
Is that good? Sure looks good from here. Well, Hilly, oh, hey, when did hey. you get back? Hi, Ernie. Hi, Hilly. Glad to see you. Glad to see you, man. Hey, where'd you get the hat? Well, yeah, I paid 12 for bucks for that, huh? Back to work? <laughs> no, it's just a farewell appearance. I'm going into business for myself. Yeah, what doing? Yeah. I'm getting married tomorrow. Why? Oh, well, again? Are we invited to the wedding? Well, I might use you for a bridesmaid, Roy. Uh-oh. How are you, Murphy? Hilly. What are you getting married for, Hilly? None of your business. You ain't fooling us, are you, Hilly? Fooling us. Look what I've got in here. Three tickets to Albany on the six o'clock train tonight. What do you mean, three? For me and my beau and uh, hats off, boys, his sweet darling mom. Oh, oh that's nice. What kind of marriage is that? It's going to be all right. I'm going to settle down. I'm through with the newspaper business. Can you well, picture Hildy singing lullabies and hanging out daddies? Popping <laughs> lies over the back fence. Sour you can grapes. see me back as soon as she gets tired beating rugs. I'm going to beat your rugs. I don't. Hey, that's third and Jefferson, isn't it, where that central school is? Well, it's cool this time of day. What do you care? You quit. Yeah, you said you were thrilled. Well, I just thought it might be a good fire, that's all. Hey, what's that? Just practicing for the Williams party in the morning. Gonna miss a nice hanging, Hildy. Not interested. Tell him to pipe down. Hey, keep quiet down there. How do you expect us to get any work done? Oh, shut up. Very little respect for the press around here. Say, did anybody phone me? Not that I know of. Right, Say, Hilda, does uh, Walter know you're getting married? Just had lunch with him. Does he know you're quitting? Yes, I told him. Any more questions? Thank you. Will I deal you in, Hilda? No, I haven't got time. I have to do a yarn on Williams. Hey, did he know what he was doing when he fired that gun? No. Well, if you ask us, no. If you ask the state alienist, the answer is yes. Who is he? What's he do? He's a bookkeeper. He starts in at $20 a week, and after 14 years, he gradually works himself up to $17.50. Come on, come. No, McCluskey Company goes out of business, and Williams loses his job. Dime over. Can't get another. No, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, so he starts hanging around the park, listening to a lot of soapbox spellbinders, making phony speeches, and begins to believe him. And make some of his own. Up a dime. I'm in. <sighs> Anything else, Doc? No, that'll be about all, Mr. Burns. Everything OK? You have nothing to worry about. <clears throat> good, good. How are you doing, Bruce? Uh, there's just one more thing, Mr. Burns. Yes, Good day, Mr. Burns, Mr. Bowler. Goodbye, Doc. Thanks very much. Day, Doc. Uh, who's the beneficiary? Uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Well, that is, in case of your death, who do we pay the money to? Why, Hildy, of course. Oh, I don't know. That'd make me feel pretty funny. Oh, now, why shouldn't I make Hildy my, uh, whatever it was, well, you know? I feel I should take care of her. But you will take care of her, Bruce. <laughs> Say, if that doctor's right, I'm good for a long time yet. Yeah? Look, Bruce, this is a debt of honor with me. I was a bad husband to Hilde. She could have claimed a lot of alimony if she'd wanted to, but she wouldn't take any. She had it coming to her, but she was too independent. Well, I'm independent, too. Well, I know you are, Bruce. I know you are. But look, now you just figure it this way. I'm good for, well, we'll say at least 25 years yet. Well, by that time, you'll probably have made enough so that the money won't mean anything to you. But suppose you haven't made good, Bruce. What about Hilde's old age? Think of Hilde. Ah, uh, I can see her now. White-haired, lavender and old lace. Can't you see her, Bruce? Yes. Yes, I can. She's old, isn't she? Now, Bruce, don't you think that Hilda's entitled to spend her last remaining years without worries of money? Of course you do, Bruce. Well, of course, if you put it that way. And remember, I love her, too. Yes, I'm beginning to realize that. And the beauty of it is... She'll never have to know until I've passed on. Oh, well. Maybe she'll think kindly of me after I'm gone. Gee. <laughs> Make me feel like a heel coming between you. No, no, Bruce, you didn't come between us. It was all over for her before you came on the scene. For me? Hey, Walter. It'll never be. What do you want? Can I see you a minute, please? Thank you. Excuse me, Bruce. Get it, you get it, you get it. Oh, where is it? Come on. Yeah. Certified? Sure. Uh, but, Walter, that's for $2,500. Well, Bruce, here we are. Certified and everything. Certified. Gosh. I'm afraid Hildy will feel ashamed to think she hasn't trusted you. <laughs> but she'll know someday. Oh, yes. Oh, Bruce. You promised to phone her as soon as you got the oh, check. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Get me Hildy Johnson, press room, criminal courts building. Uh, sit down, Bruce. Uh, the operator will get it for you. Thank you. 
Excuse me, will you? Yes. Hello? Yes, I'll wait, thank you. Start hollering. Hail the guard. Thank you. Hilda Johnson speaking. Oh, oh hello, oh. Bruce. I got a dime list. Well, what about me? We've been playing for an hour here, and I have one. Hello, Bruce. Uh, did you get the check? Is it certified? Certified and everything. I have it right in my pocket. Oh, in your pocket. That's fine. Wait a minute. Maybe it isn't so fine. Bruce, where are you? I'm in Mr. Burns' office. Is he there? Well, now, uh, look, Bruce. I don't want you to carry that check around in your pocket. Well, because... It... Yes, yes, I know all that, but, uh, Bruce, uh, there's an old newspaper superstition that the first big check you get, you put in the uh, lining of your hat. In your hat. Uh, it brings good luck. I've been a reporter for 20 years. I never heard that before. Neither did I. I know it sounds silly, dear, but do it for me, please. Open for a dime. Yes, yes, right now. All right, just a minute. There you are. I've done it. Anything else? Oh, yes. All right. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Well, everything all right, Bruce? Oh, yes. Hildy said to tell you she'll get right to work. Fine. Well, I must be going now. All right. Oh, Bruce, you don't want to forget this. My ring, you oh, know. Oh, thanks. Oh, you don't mind if I don't show you our deal? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, well thanks everything. for everything. Excuse me, what did you say? I said thanks for everything. Nonsense. Don't thank me. I should thank you. <laughs> so long. So long. Hildy, what are you doing around here? I want an interview with Earl Williams. Mm -hmm. How about a little service? No more interviews. Why not? Sheriff's orders. Besides, oh. the doctor's coming over. Can't do it. Oh. Say, is this your money? Why, well, don't think it is. Twenty bucks? Yeah, I guess maybe. That's what I thought. Come on, I'm in a hurry. Hey, Joe, open up here. Now, Hildy, don't... I do... want the law. Hello, Earl. Hello. My name's Johnson. Mind if I talk to you for a few minutes? No, I haven't anything else to do. Yeah, that's right. So you see, I couldn't plead insanity because I'm just as sane as anybody else. You didn't mean to kill that policeman, huh? Well, of course not. It's against everything I've ever stood for. They know it was an accident. I'm not guilty. It's, it's just the world. I see what you mean. Sorry about the lipstick, Earl. Now, look, after you lost your job, uh, what did you do? I tried to find another job. I mean, how did you spend your time? Oh, I used to sit around the park any place. Oh, uh, I don't smoke. When you were in the park, uh, did you hear any of those speeches? You mean those fellows that talk too much? Yeah. Well, I didn't pay any attention. You see, did I was thinking... Did you hear thinking... anything they said? Yes. Well, uh, is there anything you remember? Anything in particular? Well, there was one fellow, he... Uh, what did he talk about? He talked about production for use. Production for use. Yes, he said everything should be made use of. Makes quite a bit of sense, doesn't it? Yes, I liked him. He was a good Hello, speaker. Uh, when you found yourself with that gun in your hand and that policeman coming at you, what did you think about? I don't know exactly. You just thought of something? Well... Could it have been uh, production for use? I don't know. I... What's a gun for, Earl? A gun? Hmm. Why, to shoot, of course. Oh, and maybe that's why you used it. Maybe. Seems reasonable. Yes, yes, it is. Well, you see, I've never had a gun in my hand before. And that's what a gun's for, isn't it? Maybe, maybe that's why. Sure it is. Yes, that's what I thought of. Production for use. Well, it's simple, isn't it? Very simple. There's nothing crazy about that, is there? No, nothing at all. You'll write about that in your paper, won't you? You bet I will. Who sent you the roses? Miss Molly Molloy. She's a wonderful that person. A yes. She's beautiful, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Time's up, Hildy. Oh, all right. I guess that's all. I like talking to you. Goodbye, Miss Johnson. Goodbye, Earl. Good luck. Three landladies, boy. Mm -hmm. And well, didn't you? Right up. I wonder what the post's gonna do without Hildy. Yeah, do you suppose Walter Burns will ever let her go? I don't know. Remember what he did to Bill Fenton when he wanted to go to Hollywood? Had him thrown in jail for arson. Forgery. Was that it? Yeah. Give me some change. Hey, Mac. 
Hey, Stairway Sam. Huh? Uh, would you mind turning on some lights? Sure. The ducky can't see anything in this place. Yeah. Hey, who's this guy Hilly's gonna marry? I don't know, Bruce something. I'll give the marriage six months. Why? Oh, I... Because she won't be able to stay away from the paper any longer than that. Did you see her when that bell went off? Not that. It must be pretty nice to be able to walk out of a place and quit. Not bad. Yeah, I had a publicity job offered to me last year. Should have taken it. So what I'd like, a job on the side. Desk and a stenographer. I wouldn't mind a nice big blonde with big brown eyes. I'll bet you ten to one I don't last six months. She's just like us, and we wouldn't be sticking around waiting for that guy to Well, do. well, Miss Molly Malloy. Well, hello, Molly. Hi, Molly. Hello, Molly. How's tricks? I've been looking for you, Tramps. Come to pay a call on Williams. He's right across the courtyard. You better hurry up. Nice bunch of roses you sent to Earl. What do you want done with them tomorrow morning? <laughs> a lot of wise guys, ain't you? You're breaking up the game, Molly. What do you want? I came to... I came to tell you what I think of you, Polly. You... Keep your shirt on. If you was worth breaking my nails on, I'd tear your face wide open. What do you swore about, sweetheart? Wasn't that a swell story we gave you? Now, what do you want? Ah, well, you Mr. crumbs Dyer. have been making a fool out of me long enough. Well, I never said I loved Earl Williams and was willing to marry him on the gallows. You made that up. And about my being a soulmate and having a love nest with him. Well, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you've been sticking around that cuckoo ever since they threw him in the death house. That's a lie. Yeah, everybody knows you're a girlfriend. I met Mr. Williams just once in my life. How many? Two. When he was wandering around in the rain without his hat and coat on, like a sick dog, the day before the shooting. Give me one. I went up to him like any human being would, Two. and I asked him what was the matter. And, and he told me about being fired after being on the same job for 14 years. Who bets? That's 20 cents. And I brought him up to my room because it was warm there. I'll put it on a phonograph. Oh, listen to me, please. I tell you, he just sat there talking to me all night. He never once laid a hand on me. And, and in the morning, he went away. And I never saw him again till that day of the trial. <laughs> sure, I was his witness. And what a witness. That's why you're persecuting me. Because Earl Williams treated me decent and not like an animal. Well, and I said so. The press room, we're busy. Why don't you go see your boyfriend? Yeah, he's got a nice room. You won't have it long. He left a call for 7 a.m. <gasps> no wonder a bowl of lightning don't come down and strike you all thin. Fixing up a pain in the neck for your boyfriend. Shame on you. Shame on you. A poor little fellow that never met nobody, no harm. Sitting there this minute with the angel of death beside him, and you cracking jokes. All right, now, kids, you're going to get out of here. Now, come, on. Take your hands off of me. come on, Molly, let's get out of here. Oh, they ain't human. I know, they're newspaper men. All they've been doing is lying. All they've been doing is I writing know. lies. I know, Molly. Why won't they listen to me? Why won't they listen to me? Hello. Who? Hilda Johnson? Hang on, she'll be back in a minute. You guys want to play any more cards? I got nothing. What's the use? I can't win anyway. Press. Hilde, phone for you. Hello. Oh, hello, Bruce. Paul, where are you? You're where? Well, how did that happen? Never mind, never mind. I'll be right down. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Sorry. Ooh. Hiya, Sheriff. How you doing? Oh. My chin, my back. What's going on around here? Bruce was in trouble. Lion I... rushes to defend Cub. But... Man forgets Hanky, Mama goes to wipe nose. I still give that marriage six months. Well, I don't know what you fellas are talking about. What do you want, Pete? Oh, uh, uh I've got the tickets for the hanging here, boys. Hey, hey. Huh? what? 
Pete, why can't you hang this guy at 5 o'clock instead of 7? Sure, it won't hurt you, and we can make the city addition. Oh, well, now, that's, that's kind of raw, Roy. After all, I can't hang a man in his sleep just to please the newspaper. No, but you can reprieve him twice, so the hanging is three days before election, can't you? Well, you can run on a law and order ticket. You can do that, all right. Honest, boys, I had absolutely nothing to do with those reprieves. Yeah, how do we know there won't be another reprieve tonight? What if this Eagle Hopper finds that Williams insane? Well, he won't find him insane because he isn't. He's just as sane as I am. Sane. <laughs> Oh, now be serious. Boys, after all, this is a hanging, and it's going to go according to schedule. Seven o'clock in the morning and not a minute earlier. After all, there's such a thing as being humane, you know. All right, Pinky, wait do you want a favor. And please don't call me Pinky. Why not? Because I got a name, see, and it's Peter B. Hartwell. What's the B for? Bull. <laughs> But I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. I never stole a watch in my life. I know you didn't, Bruce. I know you didn't. All right, Mike. Come on, let him out. I can't, Hildy. He's accused of stealing a watch, and they found the watch on him. Now, but I never please, stole... Bruce. And who accused him? Diamond Louie, the biggest crook I, in town. I know. It's all good, Hildy. Now, don't, Hildy, me. You're going to let him out, or aren't you? No. I never stole... Oh, Bruce, please. All right, you're not. Well, perhaps you better read the post in the morning. I can't imagine who'd do a thing like that to me. I can't think of any enemies I have. I'm sure you haven't any... Have you got the check? Oh, yes. I have it right here. <laughs> That's a funny superstition you newspaper people have. Yes, isn't it? About being arrested at first, I thought maybe Walter Burns might have something to do with it. But then, of course, I realized he couldn't have. Why? Well, he's a very nice fellow, Hildy. Oh. Oh, yes, I found that out. What's the matter? I've lost my wallet. Yes. Uh, well, uh, Bruce, never mind. I have the money. You better give me the check, too. And that picture of us in Bermuda. Don't bother, Bruce. You'll find lots of things missing. No, Bruce, dear, you wait here. I'm not taking any more chances. I'll be down in three minutes. We're taking the next train. Oh. And so, into this little tortured mind came the idea that that gun had been produced for use, and use it he did. But the state has a production for use plan, too. It has a gallows. And at 7 a.m., unless a miracle occurs, that gallows will be used to separate the soul of Earl Williams from his body. And out of Molly Malloy's life will go the one kindly soul she ever knew. That's as far as she got. But I ask you guys, can that girl write an interview? She'll do till somebody else comes along. I don't think it's very ethical reading other people's stuff. Where do you get that ethic stuff? You're the only one who'll swipe any of it. Well, I still say that anybody that can write like that ain't going to give it up permanently to sew socks for a guy in the insurance business. Now I give that marriage three months and I'm laying three to one. Any takers? I'll take that bet. Hey, it's getting so a girl can't leave the room without being discussed by a bunch of old ladies. Hello, Post. Hey, get me Walter Burns, will you, please? Oh, I don't get sore, Hildy. We were only saying a swell reporter like you wouldn't quit so easy. Uh, this is Hildy Johnson. Oh, I can quit all right without a single quiver. I'm going to live like a human being, not like you chumps. Is that you, Walter? Oh, I've got some news for you. Yes, yes, I got the interview all right, but I've got some more important news. Yeah, perhaps you better get a pencil and take it down. All ready? Now, get this, you double-crossing chimpanzee. There ain't gonna be any interview, and there ain't gonna be any story. And that certified check of yours is leaving with me in 20 minutes. I wouldn't cover the burning of Rome for you if they were just lighting it up. And if I ever lay my two eyes on you again, I'm gonna walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese gong. Oh, so you don't know why I'm angry with you. Well, perhaps you better get Louie to tell you the story of his watch. And there's just one other little thing I want you to listen to. Did you hear that? That's the story I just wrote. Yes, yes, I know we had a bargain. I just said I'd write it. I didn't say I wouldn't tear it up. It's all in little pieces now, Walter, and I hope to do the same for you someday. And that, my friends, is my farewell to the newspaper game. I'm going to be a woman, not a news-getting machine. I'm going to have babies and take care of them and give them cod liver oil and watch their teeth grow. And, and oh, dear, if I ever see one of them look at a newspaper again, I'm going to brain them. Where's my hat? Hello. Hello. Oh, well, Mr. Burns? Yes, she's still here. here. And another thing I want to... Oh. Where is my... Oh, there it is. Hello, Doctor. Uh, sorry to be late. Oh, well, that's quite all right. <laughs> These boys from the newspapers, they take up so much of my time. You know, they wanted me to hang Williams at their convenience. Oh, hello, Ralph. Well, These newspapers, what they did to me in Chicago. <laughs> I quite believe <laughs> it. Always after me for interviews. Yes, me too. Of course, I did rather promise to make them some sort of statement when I finished here. Uh, you don't mind, do you? Uh, well, it's hardly ethical, Doctor. You oh? see, all statements are supposed to come from me. I see. Well, uh, well, what do you say to giving them some sort of joint interview? I can discuss some of the psychological aspects of the case, and you... Uh, you mean we'd have our pictures taken? together. Yes, yes, shaking oh, hands. Splendid idea. Uh, of course, I don't take a very good picture. Oh, that doesn't matter, Doctor. The publicity is the main thing. Doctor, I'm getting awful tired. Can't I go back to jail again? 
Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I forgot you were there. Uh, no, Mr. Williams, we have some further questions for you. Sheriff, do you mind extinguishing the light, please? Of course, Doctor. Safe, safe. Help us along what we have to do over here. Now, let me see. Uh, Mr. Williams, you know, of course, that you're going to be executed. Now, who do you feel is responsible for that? I am innocent. It wasn't my fault. Well, Send us a postcard. That'll yeah. do. Goodbye, Hilly. Right. 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 So long, Janssen. Let me see you again, Janssen. Next time you see me, I should be riding in a Rolls Royce, giving interviews on success. Come on. So long, you wage slaves. Bye. Bye. Oh, and you're crawling up fire escapes and getting kicked out of front doors, and eating Christmas dinners and one arm joints. Don't forget your pal, Hilly Johnson. Yeah, we are. And yeah. when the road beyond unfolds and the. <laughs> What's the matter? What happened? Hey, watch where you're aiming, will ya? Watch the gate, you try the gate! Who got away? Who was it? Oh, William! Who was it? Hello, hello, hello. Hurry up, hurry up. This is important. Give me the desk. Blanche, Earl Williams just escaped. Yeah, right. Don't know yet. Hold your back. Williams took the powder. Went over the wall. I don't know anything yet. Hold your back. Oh, post, get me Walter Burns, quick. Hilly Johnson. Walter? Walter, Hilly. Oh, we've just escaped from the county jail. Yeah? 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 Don't worry, I'm on the job. Give me a rewrite. He ain't here. Hello, Gil. Here's the situation now. You ready? Williams was taken over to the sheriff's private office to be examined by this Professor Egelhofer. And in a few minutes, he shot his way out. No, nobody knows where he got the gun. He went upstairs to the infirmary and got out through the skylight. He must have slid down the rain pipe to the street. No, nobody knows where he got it. Well, if they do, they won't talk. Hello, sweetheart, give me the desk. Crime Commission offers $10,000 reward for Williams. Murphy talking. Yeah. No clue yet as to Williams' whereabouts. Yes. Okay. No, no. Here's a little feature, though. There's been an accident about a tear bomb. Yeah, tear bomb, tear bomb. Criminals cry for it. I don't know. Look, this the tear bomb went off unexpectedly in the hands of Sheriff Hartwell's bombing squad. What went oh, off? The, the following deputies were rushed to the hospital. Oh, a fine framed you. Their names are Mervyn D. Wilkerson, the mayor's brother in law. After all I've done for you. Howard Schuster, the sheriff's uncle on his mother's side. Hello, Jim. <laughs> Sidelights on Sheriff Hartwell's manhunt. William Mansfield, the sheriff's landlord, and Lester Winthrop, who married the sheriff's niece. You remember the very homely day. All right, you ready? Call you back. Mrs. William Rice, age 55, scrub lady, while scrubbing the eighth floor of the commerce building was shot in the left leg by one of Sheriff Hartwell's deputies. Look, I'm not... There goes another scrub lady. Nah, it was only a flesh wound. They took her to the hospital. Call you back. McHugh speaking. Give me the desk. Listen, hey, Mac, I... any dope on how he escaped? Maybe the sheriff let him out so Williams could vote for him. Oh. A man answering the description of Earl Williams was seen boarding a southbound... Call you back. Oh. But you're gone. I thought so, too. Get me Walter Burns, quick. Walter. Walter, listen. I've got the whole story on how Williams got that gun and escaped, and I got it exclusive. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and it's a pip. <laughs> it cost me 450 bucks to tear it out of Cooley. Never mind that. What's the story? Well, just a minute, and I'll give you the story. But I'm telling you, first I had to give him all the money I had on me, and it wasn't exactly mine. Well, it's Bruce's money, and I want it back. Bruce's money? Sure, sure, sure. You'll get it. Now, what's the story? I'll send the money right down to you. I swear it on my mother's grave. All right, here's the story. Wait a minute, your mother's alive. My grandmother's grave. Don't be technical, Healy. What's the story? Well, you get that money down here. All right, all right, here's your story. It's the jailbreak of your dreams. It seems this expert, Dr. Egelhofer, the profound thinker from New York, was giving Williams a final sanity test in the sheriff's office. You know, sticking a lot of pins in him so that he could get his reflexes. Well, he decided to reenact the crime exactly as it had taken place in order to study Williams' powers of coordination. Well, I'm coming to it. Of course, he had to have a gun to reenact the crime with. And who do you suppose supplied it? Peter B. Hartwell. B for brains. 
No kidding. <laughs> I tell you, I'm not kidding. I'm not good enough to make this one up. Well, the sheriff gave his gun to the professor, and the professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the classified ads. No ads. <laughs> Ain't it perfect? If the sheriff had unrolled a red carpet and on Williams an umbrella, it couldn't have been more ideal. Who? Oh, no, no. Egelhofer wasn't badly hurt. They took him to the county hospital where they're awfully afraid he'll recover. Oh, that's great work, Hildy. Huh? I'll stop worrying about the money. I'll see you get it in 15 minutes. Well, I'd better get it in 15 minutes. Bruce is downstairs waiting in a taxi cab for me, and we're in a hurry. Hold on a minute. Hey, Benji. Come here. There's a guy waiting in a taxi in front of the criminal courts building. His name is Bruce Baldwin. What does he look like? It looks like um, that fellow in the movies, you know, uh, Ralph Bellamy. Oh, him? Can you handle it? I've never flopped on you yet, have I? Well, come on, get going. You only got about two minutes. Hurry. Yes, dear. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. How much was it again? Four hundred fifty dollars? Or just a second. Louis, I need four hundred fifty dollars worth of counterfeit money. You can't carry that much, boss. No, just a four hundred and fifty counterfeit. Where can I get it? Oh, I got that on me. Oh, of course. Coincidence. Well, take it over to Hildy. Hello, it's coming right over. Yeah, I'm sending it over with Louie. Well, thanks for your story, dear, and good luck on your honeymoon. No, no, never mind the thanks. Just see that money gets here. Oh, Hilly, you still here? No, I'm in Niagara Falls. McHugh speaking. Nemo, I got a good feature for you on the manhunt. Ready? Mrs. Phoebe DeWolfe, 61 and a half South State Street, colored, gave birth to a picket Indian patrol wagon with Sheriff Hartwell's special rifle squad acting as nurses. Uh, Phoebe was walking along the street when... That's right, yeah. So they coaxed her in the patrol wagon, started a race with the start. When the pickaninny was born, the rifle squad examined him carefully to see if it was Earl Williams. Well, they knew he's hiding somewhere. <laughs> yeah, here's the payoff. They, they named the kid Peter Hartwell DeWolf, Russell. and I the sheriff. Yeah, they all chipped in. Bruce, dollar. I thought you were downstairs, downstairs in the... kid ever born on a man on. What? Here's, here's another feature. Arrested right? again? Arrested what for this time? Oh, well, uh, they called it mashing. No, I didn't, Hildy. I was sitting right in the taxi where you left me, and the young lady seemed to have a dizzy spell, and I just... Huh? Well, uh, she's kind of... Uh, huh? Yes, yeah, she's a blonde. Yes, very blonde. That's Never mind, I know how it happened. Just a minute. Get me Walter Burns, Hildy Johnson. Julius. Bruce, where are you? 27 Precinct, hold on a minute, will you? Walter, you... Well, well, it was there a minute ago. But I would... I'm sorry, Kevin. Kate and Miss Johnson. Why, that double-crossing. Hello. No, not you. Bruce, I can't get there right away. For about 20 minutes. Well, you see, I have to wait here for the... Uh, I'll tell you when I see you. Oh, if I ever get my two hands again on that wall of bread... Hold on a minute, Nemo. Anything I can do to help you? How much money have you got on your mind? Sorry. 64 cents. Welcome to it. Thanks. You better buy an annuity. What's that, Nemo? No, I can't give you an official statement. No. Wait a minute, here's the mayor. Maybe he'll give us one. How about a statement, mayor? Don't pester me now, please. I've got a lot on my mind. His honor won't say anything. Ever seen Sheriff Hartwell? Well, it's hard to tell, Your Honor. You see, there's so many cockroaches around here. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about a statement, Your Honor? Sure, we go to press in 20 minutes. I can't help that. I have nothing to say. Not at this time. Uh, just a moment, please. What do you know about the escape? How'd he get out? Where'd he get the gun? Wait a minute, boys. Not so fast. Well, give us a statement on the election, then. What effect will all this have on the voters? None whatsoever. How can an unavoidable misfortune like this have any influence on the upright citizens of our fair city? Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, please, is there a red menace or ain't there? How did Williams get out of that rubber jailer yard? Now, you I understand the gaff? We picked out somebody to be responsible. Is there any truth in the report that you're on Stalin's payroll? Yeah, the senator claims you sleep in red underwear. <laughs> Never mind the jokes. Don't forget I'm the mayor of this town. Oh, wait, let me come here. Hey, Hart, well, I want to see you. Do? How'd he get away? Come, come on, on tell us. Where'd he get the gun? Hi, Your Honor. Any statement on the red uprising tomorrow? What red? Uprising. There'll be no red uprising. And the governor says the situation calls for the militia. Give me a rewrite. You can quote me as saying anything the governor says, the tissue of lies. Yes. Hello, Jake. Here's a red hot statement from the governor. He claims the mayor and the sheriff have shown themselves to be a couple of eight year olds playing with fire. <laughs> yeah. You can quote him as follows. It is a lucky thing for the city that next Tuesday is election day, as the citizens will thus be saved the expense of impeaching the mayor and the sheriff. That's all. I'll call you back. I still have seen you, mayor. <laughs> Excuse me, boys. I've got so much. Wait, Wait a minute. Stalling, Pinky. Who engineered this? Was it the Reds? No. Who was it? You? Me? No. Just a minute, and I'll tell you. I've got him located. Who, Williams? Where? Where is he? Out on Center Street, where he used to live. I just got a tip. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> the rifle squad's just going out. Oh, oh, oh stop! Out be out able to catch it if you hurry. Look, please, Pete. I want to talk. Please, Fred. Look, I've got so much to do. I'll... Now, see here, Fred. Pete, you're through. Through? You mean I, I'm through? I mean I'm scratching your name off of the ticket next Tuesday, and I'm running Sherman in your place. 
Reform the Red Widow. Yeah, but Fred, I... Williams isn't a Red, and you know it. But there are a lot of communistic sympathizers around, and I thought that if I got a slogan like that, I could... Uh, Why, I the... know it, but that's got nothing to do with this case. Do you realize there are 200,000 votes at stake, and if Earl Williams don't hang, we're going to lose him? We're going to hang him. Come in. He can't get away. What do you mean he can't get away? He did get away, didn't he? What do you want? I, uh... What do you want? Are you Sheriff Hartwell? I'm here. What is it? You're a hard man to find, Sheriff. I have a message here from the governor. He's this what's from the governor? It was a reprieve for Earl Williams. For who? Earl Williams' reprieve. Uh, you said there wasn't going to be a reprieve. I didn't know anything about it. It frightens me to think of what I'd like to do to you. Who else was there when he gave you this? Nobody. He was out fishing. Get the governor on the phone. No, he's not there. He's out duck shooting. Uh, the what a red hat. Out so fishing, cute. duck shooting. A guy who's done nothing for the last 40 years but play pinochle gets elected governor and right away he thinks he's a Tarzan. Read that. Insane, he says. Why, he knows very well Williams isn't insane. Well, I never met the man. Ah, pure politics. It's an attempt to ruin us. Dementia prick. Fred, we've so. got to think fast. What are we going to tell the tell reporters? Tell the party's through in this state on account of you. Oh, Fred. And as an afterthought, tell him I want your resignation now. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yes, this is Hartwell. What? Where? Where? Holy motor! Hold the wire! What is it? They've got him. They've got Williams. They've got him surrounded. The rifle squad have out of his house. Tell him to hold the phone. Oh, hold, I did, hold the wire. Cover up that transfer. Cover up the... No. Now listen. You never arrived with this. Yes, I did. Don't yeah. you remember? Wait a minute. I wait came minute. through that door and How I thought he was made? Sheriff Harp. I mean, you... Huh? What's your salary? Forty dollars. No, don't a week. cut me off. I'd like to make three hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's almost a hundred dollars a week. No, I couldn't afford that. Who me? Well, who do you think? Now they need a fellow like you in the city sealer's office. In the what? City sealers. You mean I should work? In no, city wait a minute. Yes. I'm in conference. No, my wife wouldn't want me to do yeah, that. Why not? So, well, you see, my wife lives in the country with my family. That's all right. You can bring her in here. We'll pay all the expenses. No, I don't think For so. For heaven's sakes, why not? Well, I got two kids going to school, and if they change towns, they lose a grade. They're not no, they won't. Things. They'll skip a grade, and I'll guarantee you that they'll graduate with highest. Hold level. your horses, yeah. also hurry up, Fred. Now, what do you say? Uh, no, it puts me in a kind of peculiar hole. No, it doesn't. Now, remember, you never delivered this. Yes, I did. No, I... you didn't. You got caught in the traffic or something. No, I came around well, the Well, pretend you did. Now, get out of here. Don't let anybody see Wait a minute. Yes, but how do I know that... Come in I... and see me in my office tomorrow. What's your name? Pettibone. What's yours? Pettibone? Not really. No, no, no. Now, all you've got to do is to lay low and keep your mouth shut. Well, I'm tired anyhow. Here, go to this address. Nice, homey place. They'll take good care of you. Just tell them Fred sent you. Here's fifty dollars on a car. Will you wait, Olson? I'll I'll tell you in one minute. Oh, you forgot to tell me what a city I'll explain it all I, tomorrow. Is it hard? No, no, easy, very easy. Well, that's good because my health is what my wife. Well, we'll fix that too. My wife? Yeah, fix anything. Go ahead. Fred, Fred, they're still on the phone. All right. Tell them to shoot to kill. What? You heard what I said. But the reprieve, Fred. If they go ahead, do as I tell you. All right. Hello, Olson. Shoot to kill. That's the orders. Pass the word along. Five hundred dollars reward. Five hundred dollars to the man who does it. All right. I'll be right over. Hi, Hildy. You double-crossing hyena. I'd What's like to take matter, you... Hildy? Don't give me that innocent stuff. What did you pull on Mr. Baldwin this time? Who, me? Yes, you and that albino of yours. Is he talking about Evangeline? None other. She ain't no albino. She'll do the one comes she along. She was born right here in this country. If she tries anything else, you'll have to stay right here in this I country. I don't... Like... And you too, and it won't be on a phony charge either. Did you bring that money? Oh, yeah. Four hundred bucks. Four hundred and fifty. All right. You can't blame a guy for trying. Here, you better give me a receipt. I'll give you a scar. I got plenty of them. Oh. And I'll take Mr. Baldwin's wallet, too. Mr. Baldwin's what? His purse. Come on, come on, Louis. All right, Hildy. I'll do it for you, because I like you. But you better tell that financier to be more careful in these hard times, you sure, know what I mean? Sure, sure. Want to loan him a pair of your brass knuckles, too? I don't talk that way, Hildy. Here, I'll take that. I'll take it to the station. Wait Go a on. minute, wait a minute. You'll take it over to the station, all right? You'll take it to the 27th precinct and tell the cops how this all I happened. I couldn't do that, Hildy. Barnes would have me an Alcatraz in an hour. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Catch. Louis! Hello, operator. Hilly Johnson, will you get me the... Drop that phone. Never mind. You're not going to tell anybody where I am. Put that gun down, Earl. You don't want to shoot me, Earl. I'm your friend, remember? I'm going to write the story on your production for use. Oh, yes. That's right. Production for use. You don't want to hurt your friend. Don't move. Maybe you're my friend and maybe you're not. But don't come any near. You can't trust anybody in this crazy world. I don't blame you. If I were you, I wouldn't trust anybody either. Don't do that. Put it back. Put it back. You know, if you try any tricks, I'll shoot you. I can do it right from here. Sure, sure you could, Earl. You don't want to do that. You don't want to kill anybody. No, you're right. 
I don't want to kill anybody. That's what I thought. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I was just going to close the door so nobody would see you. No, you weren't. You were going to get somebody. But I don't want that. All I want is to be left alone. Oh, get me you Yes, want. you will. You'll get them after me again. I won't let you do that. I will. Uh, I guess I'm tired of all the shells. Oh, I'm awful tired. Earl, I couldn't go Earl, through. Oh, that shot, they'll know where you're here. I don't care. I'm not afraid to die. Stop it, I was you? telling the fellow that when he handed me the gun. Be quiet, will Waking you? me up in the middle of the night, talking to me about things they don't understand. Shut up. I wish, I wish they'd take me back if they hang me. Well, they will if you don't keep quiet. I, don't care. I couldn't go through another day like this. Well, maybe you think I could. Give me Walter Burns, quick. Tell him I need him. Hello, hello. Oh, but Bruce, please. I know I said to be down 20 minutes, but something terrific has happened. Hold on. Walter, Hildy, come over here right away. Wait, Bruce, just a second. I'll explain everything. Walter, get this. I've got Earl Williams here. Yeah, right in the press room. Honest, on the level. Hurry, I need you. Right. Bruce, the biggest thing in the world has happened. I've captured Earl Williams. You know, the murderer. Stay down there, Earl. Wait a minute. Listen, Bruce, I'll be down. But just as soon as I hand him over the paper, I'll be right down. Oh, Bruce, I can't. Bruce, don't you realize it's too hard? Who is it? What do you want, Molly? I gotta find. Where is everybody? Well, they're not here. They've all gone. Oh, please tell me where they've gone. Please tell me. Molly, I don't know. And I'm awfully busy. Am I running wrong? Oh, look. They got him surrounded. They're gonna shoot him down like a dog. They're looking for you, too. If you're smart, you'll get out of here. I don't care. You gotta tell me. You gotta. I ain't afraid all of right, them. All right, I'll tell you where they are. They're, they're down to Center Street, Center and Fourth. Oh, that's where he used to. Molly. Molly, don't go. Oh, come in, Molly. Drop a chair. <laughs> Hello, Molly. How did you get in here? Down the pipe. I didn't mean to shoot him. Really, I didn't. Shh. Be quiet. You believe me, don't you, Molly? Sure, I believe you. Thanks for the roses. They were beautiful. That's all right, Mr. Green. I'm going to mark you. No, no, for heaven's sake, don't you get don't scared. Be quiet. I want to get him out of here. Sit down. You're crazy. You wouldn't get halfway down that hole without being seen. Yeah, but they'll find him. I know it. I know it. I'm trying to think before those reporters come back. Let him take me. What difference does it make? Oh, I'll never let him. Hey, who locked the door? Oh, now it's too late. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Earl, get in this desk. Oh, what Come you? on, get in. All right, all right, I'm coming. Oh, what are you trying to do? Kick the door down? You're getting kind of exclusive, ain't you? After all, we got some phone calls to make. Hey, what's she doing up Run there? down and get some smelling salts, will What's the matter? What happened? Came up here and had hysterics. Got yeah. pretty sick. How do you feel, Kent? I don't feel so good. Get you some water? I'll get it. Do anything for you? No. No, oh, you don't look so sick to me. You didn't bump into Williams, did you? Ain't you funny? Yeah, where is he? Let me alone, will you? Okay. Give me the desk. No harm in asking. Hello, Jim. Yeah, it's false alarm. They surrounded the house all right, but they forgot to tell Williams, and he wasn't there. Some Halloween going on outside, the whole police force standing on its ear. Oh, hello, Hildy. I thought you were gone. I've been waiting for some money from Walter. What a chase. Give me emo. Who's on Williams yet? Murphy talking. Okay, let us. Any news, boys? Yeah. I've never been so tired in my life. What? Where? Melrose Station? Huh? All right, connect me. Hello, Molly. How are you? Hold it a minute. Hey, fellas, this looks good. Yeah, call you back. An old lady just called Detective Bureau and claims Williams is hiding under her piazza. Tell her to stand up. Well, we looked every other place. Did you want to go out on it? I have to stick around. I'll cover this in for you. Nah, I spent a dollar forty on taxi cabs already. Let's not do any more going out. Never mind, Sarge. Tear it up. Say, who pulled the shades down? I did. They were throwing those lights around. You know? I got a hunch Williams ain't anywhere they've been looking for him. He might be right here in this building somewhere. Sure, sure. Hanging around like a duck in a shooting gallery. There's that skylight to get out of, but how did he reach the ground? I'm pretending there ain't any earl. Well, jump over to this roof. It's only about four feet. Yeah, once he got to the roof, he could slide down a drain pipe. And come in any one of these windows on this side. Yeah. The story's gonna walk right in the window. The mastermind's at work. Why don't you boys go home? Maybe Williams will come and call on you. Wouldn't it be funny if he's in this building somewhere? Well, why not search the building? Everybody take a floor. Oh, no, take no, this I'm name. not gonna wander well, all over this place. A great bunch of reporters you are. The biggest story in two years, and you're all too lazy to go out. Say, Hildy, if I know you, you seem pretty anxious to get rid of it. You trying to scoop us or something? Yeah, what what are you is crazy it? on my own Maybe time? Molly's been giving her the story on how Williams got the gun. Yeah, did you smuggle that gun into Williams, Molly? Oh, no, I didn't do nothing. Come clean, Molly. Come on, let's Lily, let the girl alone. She said, Will? Mrs. Baldwin, mother. Don't you tell... mother me, playing cat and mouse with my poor boy, keeping him locked up, I making us miss that. two trains, and you supposed to be married tomorrow. I'll be with you in five minutes. You we don't have to go with me at all. Just give me Bruce's money, you can stay here forever, as far as I'm concerned. Well, you mother, that please. murderer you caught. What's that? What did you say? 
Which murder? one of these men is it? They all look like murderers to me. Wait a minute, Hildy. What murder did you catch? I was just talking about it. I never said any such thing. I'm quoting my son, and he has never lied to me. Somebody's lying. That's ridiculous. In the first place, I never said anything like that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I said I was trying to find the murderer. Come on, Hildy. You got it all balled up. Can't you see that? Who you holding on? Nobody. Come clean and let me go, will you? I don't know where he is. Please. Stop it. Stop it. What are you asking her for? She don't know where he is. I'm the only one that knows. Where is William? Try and find out. Come on, Molly, talk. Talk? Now you want me to talk? Sure. Oh, ain't that funny? You wouldn't listen to me before, not even for a minute. And now you want me to talk. Don't tell him anything, Molly. Let me alone. I know what I'm Stay doing. Stay out of this, Hilly. Why didn't you listen to me? Why couldn't Come on, you? cut that out. You keep your hands off me. Where is he? What do you want to know for? So you can write some more lies, so you can sell some more papers. Never mind, Dad. All right, all right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a story. I'll give you a wonderful story. Only this time it'll be true. You'll never find him now. Oh, oh, oh. Get the ambulance, oh. somebody. Get an ambulance, somebody. She's dead. Oh, she isn't killed. She's moving. Darling, did you see that? Where is he? She jumped off the window. I know that. Where is he? Anyway, I said. she isn't dead. Come she... to it. Hildy, where have you got Williams? He's, uh, he's in the desk. Huh? Kevin, she didn't kill us. How are you doing? Let me out. I can't stand it. Keep quiet. You're sitting pretty. What's in there? Who are you? What are you doing? Who is she? This is Mrs. Baldwin, Bruce's mother. What are you doing? Shut up. I won't shut up. You're doing something wrong. Mother, please. Take her out of here. What? Now, wait a minute, Walter. Quiet, Louis. Yes, Walter. Take the lady over to Pollock Mike's. What? My name's Louis Peluso. <laughs> Lock her up and see if she doesn't talk to him. Mother, you can't do this. What do I tell him? Tell him it's a case of DT. Don't worry, Mother. This is only temporary. Walter, let go of me. Where do you think you're going? I'm going after Mother and I'm going to get Bruce out of jail. Walter, why did you have to do this to me? Get Bruce out of jail? How can you worry about a man who's resting in a nice, quiet police station? Well, this is going on. Hildy, this is war. You can't desert me oh, now. Oh, Walter, you get off that trapeze. You've got your story right over there on the desk. Go on, smear it all over the front page. Earl Williams captured by the Morning Post. I covered your story for you, and I got in a fine mess doing it. Now I'm getting out. You drooling idiot. What do you mean? I just what I out? said. There are 365 days in a year one can get mad. How many <laughs> times you got a murderer locked up in a desk once in a lifetime? Hildy, you got the whole city by the seat of the pants. Sure, I know, I know. You I... know, you know. You got the brain of a pancake. This isn't just a story you're covering. It's a revolution. This is the greatest yarn in journalism since Livingston discovered Stanley. It's the other way around. Oh, well, don't get technical at a time like this. You realize what you've done, honey. You've taken a city that's been graft ridden for 40 years under the same old gang. And with this yarn, you're kicking him out. You're giving us a chance to have the same kind of government New York's having under the Guardia. Listen, honey, if I didn't have your best interest at heart, you think I'd waste my time arguing with you? You've done something big, Hildy. You stepped up into a new class. Huh? We'll make such monkeys out of those ward healers next Tuesday. Nobody will vote for them, not even their wives. Expose them, eh? Certainly. We'll crucify that mob. We'll keep Williams undercover until morning so the Post can break the story exclusive. Then we'll let the governor in on the capture. Share the glory with him. I get him. it. I get it. You kicked over the whole city hall like an abacard. You got the mayor and Hartwell backed up against the wall. You put one administration out and another one in. This isn't just a newspaper story, Hildy. It's a career. And you stand there belly aching about whether you catch an 8 o'clock train or a 9 o'clock train. Well, I never figured oh, it that way. Oh, you still a doll-faced hick, that's why. Gee, he'd be the whitehead boy. Sure, they'll be naming streets after you. Hildy Johnson Street. There'll be statues of you in the park. The movies will be after you. The radio. By tomorrow morning, I'll bet you there's a Hildy Johnson cigar. You can see the billboards now. It says, light up with Hildy Johnson. Oh, what? Will you stop that acting? Huh? we got a lot to do. Oh, you're talking. We can't leave Williams in here. We'll take him over to my private office. Which is our phone? That one on the end. Oh. How are you going to take him? You'll see him. Not if he's inside the desk. We'll carry the desk over. Hello. You can't move that desk. It's crawling with cops outside. All right, we're out the window with pulleys. Now, quit stalling. Get the typewriter over here. Come on, stop pounding out of leaves. How much of this stuff do you want? All the words you got. Hello, give me Duffy. Hey, Walter. What? Can I call the mayor a bird of prey? Call him anything you like. How about the time he had his house painted by the fire department? Give him the word. Uh-huh. Hello, Duffy, get set. We got the biggest story in years. Earl Williams captured by the Morning Post exclusive. Yeah. And I want you to tear out the whole front page. That's what I said, the whole front page out. I never mind the European war. We got something a whole lot bigger than that. Hildy Johnson's riding the lead. I'll give it to you as soon as she's finished. And listen, Duffy, get hold of Butch O'Connor. Time to come up here right away with half a dozen of his wrestlers. Yeah, Butch O'Connor. What? Well, I got a desk I want, Bruce. Never mind what... Hildy. What the deuce do you want? Oh, hello, Bruce. Hildy. No, no, never mind the Chinese earthquake, for heaven's sake. Hildy, I just want to ask you one question. Bruce, how did you get out of jail? Well, not through any help no, of yours. No, listen, buddy, oh. you can't I'm come in here. We're busy. You. I had to wire Albany for a hundred dollars so I could get out on bail. No, Look, I don't care if there's a million there. I don't know what they're going to think up there in Albany. They had yeah. to send the money to the police station. Oh, for Pete's sake, Hildy, come on. We're waiting for that story. Yeah, uh, we'll explain everything to them, Bruce. Well, where's huh? Mother? She said she was coming up here. Uh, she left. No, I can't hear you, Duffy. Where'd she go? Out someplace. Oh, no, junk the Polish corridor. Hildy, tell me where my mother was going. Uh, she couldn't say. Oh, never mind what, that. Kind of this is more important. Did she get the money from you? Uh, no, no, she left what? in a hurry. 
I'll take that money, Hill. All right, Bruce, right there in my purse. I decided I can handle things around here, and I'll take that certified check, too. I'll give it to you, Bruce. Here, here's the tickets, and you'll find your money in the wallet. My wallet? This is my wallet. Say, there's something funny going on. Hill, what are you doing? Just wanted to look at it. Hilly, I'm, Hilly. Hilly, I'm huh? taking the 9 o'clock train. Sure, oh, sure. Did you Certainly. hear what I said? I said, I'm huh? taking the, the 9 o'clock train. Tra oh, Bruce, I put it in here. Hey. Better alone, will you, buddy? Will you do me a favor, Bruce, Hilly, please? I just want you to answer me one question. Yes, you don't want to come with me, I need you? that. Well, answer me, Hilly. You don't, do you? No. Take all those Miss America pictures off, page six. Hildy, tell me. Please tell me the truth. Oh, wait. If you ever love me, Hildy. Now, look here, my good man. You shut up, Burns. Now, how can Mr. I do anything to you? You're right doing all this to her. I know yeah. that. She wanted to get away from you and everything you stand for, but you were too smart. What? You caught her and changed her mind. Take Hitler and stick him on the funny page. Now, let me ask Hildy, you, Mr. You're whatever give up your name everything is. for a man like him. No, I am not. But, Bruce, can't you see that something's happened? Wait, I'll tell you everything. Tell him. You tell, tell him nothing. He's a spy, you fool. You're not a spy. Come on, Hildy. You're coming with me right now. Give me just a second. Can't you? Don't you see this is the biggest thing in my keep life? Quiet, I Lily. see. I'll keep. I'm like something in the icebox, aren't I? Yeah. You just don't love oh, me. Oh, now that isn't true. Just because you won't listen, you say I don't oh. love you. Now you know that isn't the point oh, at all. Oh, what else? The have point you is that you never now? intended to be decent and live like a human being. What's that? All right, all right. Oh, if that's the way you want to think. Bastion jumping. I'm trying now. to concentrate. You're just like him and all the rest. Sure, sure. That's what I am. What? What? No, no. Leave the rooster story alone. That's human interest. Did you get hold of Butcher Collier? Look, if you don't need sympathy or understanding, you don't understand. Well, get hold of him. I understand, all right. I understand. Wait, wait. Just a minute. There's only one question I want to know. What? Walter. What? The mayor's first. White, what was her name? You mean the one with the ward on her? Right. Fanny. What did you say, uh, Duffy? Hilly, I uh, don't think you ever loved me at all. Oh, never mind that. You're not working for the advertising well, department. If you change your mind, I'm leaving on the 9 o'clock train. Hold on, Duffy. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, I am. Instead of trying to change me into something else, I'm no suburban bridge player. I'm a newspaper man. That's the stuff, Hilly. Keep it coming as fast as you can. Get back in there, you mock turtle. Hello, Duffy. Did you tell Bush and his gang to take a taxi as a matter of life and death? Good. Stay on this wire. Push is on his way over. All we got to do is hold out for 15 minutes. The boys will be back. They'll be coming in here to phone. I'll handle them. Oh, oh, now the moon's out. Fine. Three taps is made. Don't forget. How are you doing? Got enough air? Not very much. That better? You're sitting pretty. How's it coming, honey? Oh, all right, I guess. Uh, where's Bruce? Bruce? Uh, oh, he went out. Uh, is he coming back here? Certainly he's coming back. Didn't you hear him? What have you got so far? Let me hear it. Uh, uh, while hundreds of Sheriff Hartwell's paid gunmen stalked uh, through the city, shooting innocent bystanders, spreading their reign of terror, Earl Williams was lurking less than 20 hours. Wait a minute, the wait a minute. Aren't you going to mention the post? What? Doesn't the paper get any credit? Oh, I, I, I did that right there in the second paragraph. Well, who's going to read the second paragraph? Listen, honey, uh, for 10 years I've been telling you how to write a newspaper story, and that's what I get. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the idea of locking this door? Who's that? Benzinger at his desk. Open the door, will you? Listen, what did you say his name was? Benzinger at the, the Tribune. Tribune, huh? Who's in there? Haven't you any better sense than that? Uh, hello. Hello, Mr. Burns. Well, quite an honor having you come over here. Hello, Benzinger. Oh, you know my... <laughs> Excuse me, I just want to get my... You know, uh... you know, it's quite a coincidence seeing you tonight, isn't it, Hildy? Yes, yes. How, how do you mean? Well, as a matter of fact, I was talking to our Mr. Duffy about you just this afternoon. Really? Well, nothing detrimental, I on hope. On the contrary, on the contrary. There was one swell story you had in the paper this morning. Oh, did you, uh, did you care for the poem, Mr. Burns? Uh, the poem? Mm. The poem was great. I like the ending especially. And all is well outside his cell. But in his heart, he hears the hangman calling and the gallows falling and his white-haired mother's tears. Heartbreaking. Uh -huh. That's fine. Now, how'd you like to come and work for me? What? Yes, we can use a man like you. All we got now are a lot of lowbrows like Johnson here. Are you serious, Mr. Burns? Serious? Wait a minute. Listen, Duffy. Duffy, I'm sending a Mr. Benzinger over to see you. Uh, Benzinger? Oh, yeah. And Mervyn, isn't it? Yeah. No, Roy. Roy V. Certainly. Roy V. Benzinger, the poet. Well, of course, you wouldn't know. You probably never heard of Shakespeare, either. <laughs> now, now, look, I want you to put Mr. Benzinger on the staff right away. How much getting on the Tribune, Ross? Ah, 75. I'll give you 100 in a byline. Now, you give him everything he wants, you understand? Okay. Now, look, Roy, I want you to hustle and write me a story from the point of view of the escaped man. He hides, cowering, afraid of every sound, of every light. He hears footsteps. His heart is going like that, and all the time they're closing in. Now, get the sense of the animal at bay. Sort of Jack London style? Exactly. I'll just get my rhyming dictionary. It doesn't have to rhyme. doesn't have to rhyme. Oh, well, I'm deeply grateful, Mr. Burns. Good. It's very, uh, oh, oh, if you should have an opening for a war correspondent, I parlay a little French, you know. I'll keep you in mind. Au revoir, mon capitaine. Bonjour. His white-haired mother's tears. That's a tough, isn't it? 
Now listen, that fellow Benzinger's on his way over to see you right now. Handle him with kid gloves. Put him to work writing poetry. No, no, we don't want him. Just stall him along until the extra's out, then tell him his poetry smells and kick him downstairs. Double crossing <laughs> swine. You said it. That'll teach him a lesson. He won't quit his paper without giving notice after I this. mean you. Me? You double cross anybody. Wait a minute. What? I just remembered. Bruce isn't coming back here. He said he was taking the 9 o'clock train. Oh, well, in that case, he's gone by oh. now. Come on, honey. Oh. Don't sit there like a frozen robin. Get on with the story. We ought to have our plans all finished by the time Butch gets here. How oh, you have messed up my life. What am I going to do? Oh, well, the window's too small. We'd have to carry the desk out of the building. Be on that train hey, right now. Come on, what come a on. staff I am falling for you all. I'm going to name streets after me. Yes, Johnson yes. Street. Well, you've had a nice Johnson rest. Street. Now get back to well, work. I'm not going back to work. Walter, well, watch. Who is it? It's me, boss. It's Louie. Louis. Holy Jesus. smokes, what's the matter with Mrs. you? Mrs. What'd you do with it? What happened? Been in a fight? Down Western Avenue, we was going 65 miles an hour, you know what I mean? Take that mush out of your mouth. Where's the old lady? I'm telling you. We run smack into a police patrol, you know what I mean? We busted it in half. Was well, she hurt? Look, where is she? Tell me. Can you imagine bumping into a load of cops? They come rolling out like oranges. What did you do with her? Oh. Search me. When I come to, I was running down 34th You were with her, weren't you? Was I? You were in the taxi cab. The driver got knocked cold. Butterfingers, oh, I give you an old dame to take something and you hand her over to the cops. What do you mean I handed her? The cops was on the wrong side of the street. Uh, no, everything's fine. She's probably squawking her head off in a police station. I don't think she's squawking much. You know what I mean? Don't tell me. She killed. Hey, was she? Did you notice? Hmm? Hmm? Say, listen, me with a gun on the hip and a kidnapped old lady on my hands, I'm going to stick around asking questions from a lot of cops. You know what I mean? Dead. Dead. Oh, this is the end. Oh. Well, it's fate, Hildy. What will be, will be. What am I going to say to Bruce? What can I tell him? Look, honey, if he really loves you, you won't have to tell him anything. Snap out of it. Would you rather have had the old dame dragging the whole police force in here? I killed her. I'm responsible. What am I going to do? How can I ever face Bruce again? Look at me, Hildy. I am looking at you, you murderer. Oh, uh, now, if it was my own grandmother, I'd carry on. You know I would for the paper. Louis, where did it happen? Weston and 34th. I got to get out of here. We can do more here. Now, be calm. Listen. Hello? Hello? Me in 4557. Who? Well, Butch, where are you? Oh, no. Mission Hospital receiving well, room, please. Well, what are you doing there? Haven't you even started? Hello, Eddie. Hildy Johnson. Was there an old lady brought in there from the oh, little smash? It's Sebastian, Butch. Listen, it's a matter of life and death. Nobody? Oh. I can't hear. Morning, sir. 469. Speak up. A what? Well, you can't stop for a day now. Uh, community hospital, give me the receiving room. I don't please. care if you've been after her for six years, but your whole lines are at stake. You're going to let a woman come between us after all we've been through? Oh, Max, Hildy Johnson, was there an old lady brought in there in an auto smash up? Butch, I'd put my arm in fire for you up to here. Now you can't double cross me. Well, look around, will you please? Yes, she does. All right, put her on. I'll talk to her. Oh, good evening, madam. Now, listen, you ten-cent glamour girl, you can't keep Butch away from his duty. What's that? You say that again, I'll come over there and kick you in the teeth. Say, what kind of language is that? Now, look here, you... <laughs> she hung up. What did I say? <laughs> Duffy! How do you like that? Mousing Hello, around what? with some big... What'd you Duffy! Say? You shut up in front of here! Duffy! Huh? Let's cooperate. Nobody? Duffy! Hey, well, where is Duffy? Diabetes. I ought to know better than to hire anybody with a disease. Well, give me Olympia. 2 one Louis. will you? Yes, what? Louis, it's up to you. Anything you say, well, boss. Well, beat it up. Get hold of some guys. Who do you want? Anybody with hair on his chest. Get him off the street. Get him anywhere. Offer him anything, only get him. we got to get that desk out of here. Is it important? Is it important? Listen, Louis, you're the best friend I got. I like you too, boss. All right, then don't fail me. Get enough people to move that desk. Now, come on, I'm relying you on you. You know me, boss. The shirt off my back. Okay, don't bump into anything. That dumb immigrant to flop on me as sure as you're born. Try it again at the hospital. It's bound to Well, answer. if he's not back in five minutes, we'll carry it out alone. Do anything you want. There's a million ways we can start a fire. Have the firemen take it out in the confusion. I don't give a darn what you do. Hey, come here. See if we can lift it. Oh, what? Nobody? Oh, never mind. Are you going to help me? No, I'm not. Do you want me to strain my back? Yes, I'm going to find Mrs. Baldwin. Don't open that door. I'm going down to the morgue and I'm going to find oh, her. Oh, hey, 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 what talk is this? Hey, let go. What's the idea? Hey, what is this? Watch our hurry. Hold on, boy. Get your hands off me. Now, look here, Johnson. Hey, you. You mean me? Yes, you. What do you mean by breaking in here like this? Hmm? You can't bluff me, Burns. I don't care who you are or what paper you're editor off. let go of me, will Hang you? Hang on to my boys. Oh, please, look, fella. Something's happened to my mother in law. Well, Keep her in here. Maybe going out to get William. She oh. had the door locked. She and Molly were in here talking. I know where he is. Oh, look, I don't know anything, really, and there's been an accident. Johnson, there's something very, very peculiar going on here. Now, see here, Johnson. Just a moment, Hardwell. If you have any accusations to make, make them in the proper manner. Otherwise, I'll have to ask you to get out. You'll ask me to what? Get out. 
Oh, you will, eh? You keep that door closed and don't let anybody in or out. Now, we'll see about this. Come on, Pinky, give him the third degree. Yeah, I'm talking. You got Williams, Pinky. Yes. Now, look here, Johnson. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Are you going to talk or aren't you? Well, what do you want me to say? What do you know about Williams? What do you know about Williams? Now, now we're getting... All right, boys, take her out of here. I've oh, got no, you don't. You talk. don't you dare touch me or... Oh, oh. Come out! She's got a gun. Grab her! Oh, no, you don't. Walter! All right, Burns, I'll take that gun. Where did you get this gun? I've got a right to carry a gun if I want to. Not this gun. I can explain that, Hardwell. When Hildy told me she was going to interview Earl Williams, I thought it would be dangerous, so I gave her a gun to defend herself. Oh, you did? Well, that's very yeah. interesting. But this happens to be the gun that Williams used to shoot his way out with. Oh, what? My good man, are you trying to make me out a liar? I ought to know my own gun, ought not. Oh, oh, so that's so where Williams got the gun. Yeah, Hildy got it from Williams. Where is Earl Williams? Where have you got him? You're barking up the wrong tree, Harwell. I'll give you three minutes to tell me where he is. He went over to the hospital to call on Professor Egelhofer. What? With a bag of marshmallows. Where is he? Ask the mastermind yes. what he's doing here. Speak up. Speak up. What do you know about this? My dear fellow. Where is the he? The morning post does not obstruct justice or hide criminals. You ought to know that. Johnson, you're under arrest. What? And you too, Burns. Who's under arrest? Listen, you insignificant, square-toed, pimple-headed spy. Do you realize what you're doing? I'll show you what I'm doing. Burns, you're obstructing justice, and so is the Morning Post. And I'm going to see that you're fined $10,000. You'll see nothing of the kind. And I'm going to begin by impounding the Post property. Is this your desk? No. Yes. What are you afraid of, Hildy? I dare you to move this desk out of here. Oh, you Yes, do. go ahead and try it. All right, I will. Now, I'm warning you. You move this desk out of this building, and I'll put you behind bars. He can you... do it, too. Is that so? Yes. I'll see the Roosevelt here. Is about All it. right, tell him. Come on, boys. All Confiscate right, now, this, this desk. This is your last chance. This is a federal offense, and you fellas will be accessory. We'll take a chance on that. Go ahead, boys. All right. Open up this door. Mother. Yes. Oh, mother, I am glad to see you. Are you all right? I've been That's the man that did it right there. What's the idea here? This lady claims she's been kidnapped. What? They dragged me all the way down the stairs and put me Just a minute. Touch. Did this man have anything to do with it? Why, well, he was in charge of the whole thing. He told them to kidnap me. Excuse me, madam. Are you referring to me? Well, you know you did. What about this, Burns? Kidnapping, huh? Oh, trying to frame me, huh? I never saw this woman before in my life. Why, what a thing to say. I was standing right here when that girl jumped out the window. Call the mayor. Get him over here right away. Now, look here, madam. Be honest. If you were out joyriding, <gasps> plastered, or got into some scrape, why don't you admit it instead of but, accusing innocent people? You <clears throat> ruffian. How dare you talk like that? To me. It's uh, just a little crazy, Mother. And I can tell you something more. Yes? I can tell you why they did it. Uh, yeah? sure? They had some kind of a murder in here, and they were hiding. Hiding oh, no, it. Hiding it. Madam, you're a cockeyed liar, and you know it. <gasps> Hello, Mother. 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 Hello, Give me Jake. Mother! Close that door. Oh, All over for you. What's happening? Hello, Jake. Hang on. Hildy, call Duffy. No, you don't. Oh, no. You want to see a scoop? In a minute. Now, everybody. Hold the wire. Aim right at the center. That's got a blood blood. All right, Carl, Frank, one of you get on each end of the desk. Yes, something coming up. We got you covered, Williams. Have it in a minute. Don't try to move. Any time now. I'll count three. It's hot. One. Ready for an emergency. Two. Any second now. Three. Up with it. I got you, Williams. Go ahead, shoot me. Come out of there. Oh, Williams, Come on, just captured me in the press boys. room in the criminal courts Come building, on. hiding in a desk. Come on, on your feet. Come out, boys. Don't try any funny stuff. Williams was unconscious when they opened the desk. Williams put up a desperate struggle, but the police overpowered him. He offered no resistance. He tried to shoot out with the cops, but his gun wouldn't work. Break through a whole court in the police. Duffy, the morning post just that. turned Williams over to the sheriff. Put the cops on these people. More on later. Anonymous note received by the sheriff led to Williams' capture. Hold on. The sheriff is tracing a mysterious telephone call which gave away Williams' hiding place. Hey, where's the old lady? Where'd she go? She went out. Oh. Oh. Come back, come back. Hello, Gary. Give me the warden's office, quick. Ah, well, you're gonna wish you'd never been born. Oh, am I? Hello, Fred. Well, fine work, Pete. You certainly delivered the goods. I'm proud of you. Look kind of natural, don't sight for sore eyes. Aiding an escaped criminal and a little charge of kidnapping. It. What's that? To me. Well, that's the jail. There must be somebody there. Well, it looks like about ten years apiece for you two birds. <laughs> Does it? Whenever you think you've got the morning post licked, it's time for you to get out of town. Whistling in the dark. Well, that isn't going to help you this time. You're through. Listen, the last man who said that to me was Archie Leach just a week before he cut his throat. Is throw. that so? so? We've been in worse chance than this, haven't we, Hildy? Nope. You, you forget the power that always watches over the morning post, my boy. Well, not with you now. Hello, this is Hartwell. Well, says you. I've caught him. Yes, Williams. Single-handed. 
Oh. We'll proceed with the hanging per schedule. You're going to be in office exactly two days more. Then we're going to start pulling your nose out of that office. I'll tell you what you'll be doing. What? You'll be... Uh, well, go on, make a bit more. Making more rooms in the state penitentiary. Hello, Joe. <laughs> this is Hartman. I want you to come over to my office right away. Yes, I've just captured a couple of important birds, and I want you to take the confession. Don't forget Leibowitz. Hey, all the lawyers in the world aren't going to help you now. Listen, you're talking to the Morning Post. Oh, power of the press. Ha, 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 listen. Bigger men than you have found out what the power of the press is. President, King. Here's a reprieve. No, Shay, you are... Say, get out of here. Oh, you can't bribe me. My wife's Get out of here, you. Oh, no, I won't. Here's the reprieve. What? I don't want to be a city sealer. Who is My this wife... Man? Throw him out, Frank. All right, out you Where's go. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Who's trying to bribe you? They wouldn't take this. He's insane. What did I tell you? An unseen power. What do you mean by coming in here with a cock and bull story like Look. that? Frame up. He's an imposter. Arrest him. Come Just on, a you. minute. Trying to hang an innocent man to win an election, eh? That's murder. That's a lie. Never saw him before. Well, if I was to tell my wife... What's your name? The Pettibone. Joe Pettibone. When did you deliver this first, Mr. Pettibone? Who'd you talk to? They started right in bribing me. Who's they? Those. Them. That's uh, absurd on the face of it. Uh, Wander is talking like a child. Yeah. Out of the mouths of babes. Hi, babe. He's insane. Drunk or something. <laughs> Why, if this unfortunate man, Williams, has really been reprieved, I'm personally tickled to death. Aren't you, Pete? Oh, yeah. go on. You'd hang your own mother to be re-elected. That's a know. horrible thing to say about anybody, Miss Johnson. Oh, you marvelous. Take now a look at there, Walter. You're an intelligent man. Uh, never mind that. Yeah. Well, let's have your story, Mr. Pettibone. Well, 19 years ago, I married Mrs. Pettibone. Skip all that. Well, she wasn't Mrs. Pettibone no, then. No, no, she was no. one of the I mean, Jones I mean, Sheriff, this document is authentic, and Earl Williams has been reprieved. And our commonwealth has been saved the painful necessity of shedding blood. You said it. Now, get off the soapbox. Save that for the Tribune. Pete, take those handcuffs off, I my friends. Going I'm going amazed that you're doing a thing like Isn't that. Isn't he awful? Water, no. you don't know how badly I feel. No. No excuse at all for Pete to fly off the handle. I was only doing my duty, nothing personal. That's all right. What'd baby. you say your name was? Uh, Pettibone, wasn't it? Yes. It, here's a picture of my wife. Yeah, a fine-looking woman. Because yeah, you haven't seen her yet. Yeah, well, she's all right. All oh, right. well, she's good enough for me. Yeah. If I was to tell my wife... I ooh, understand ooh, ooh, ooh. perfectly, Mr. Pettibone. And as long as I'm mayor, why... It's ought to be about three more hours, I'd say. Just long enough for us to get out a special edition asking for your recall. And your arrest. You know, you little boys ought to get about ten years apiece, I think. Yep. Don't make any hasty decisions, Mr. Burns. You might run into a thumping big libel suit. You're going to run into the governor. Why, my old friend, the governor, and I understand each other perfectly. Yeah, yes, and so do I. So do you watch, you hoodoo. And now, Mr. Pettibone, if you'll come along with us, we'll take you over to the warden's office and deliver this reprieve. Come along, Pete. Vows to tell my wife. You won't have to. <laughs> Wait till those two future jailbirds oh, read boy. the morning post tomorrow. Tight squeeze, though. <laughs> Give me Duffy. That's the worst jam we've been in a long time. Yeah. What? Well, where is he? Get him. Remember the time we stole old Lady Haggerty's stomach off the coroner's physician? Isn't that marvelous? Any time you need this guy, he's never there. We proved she'd been poisoned, though, didn't mm -hmm. we, Walter? Yeah. He had to hide out for a week. Do you remember that? Show him hotel. That, that's where, I mean, how we... Yeah, we could have gone to jail for that, too. You know that. Ah, oh, so. yes, maybe you're right, Hildy. It's a bad business. Well, you're going to be better off. So you better get going. Where'll I go? Well, to Bruce, of course. But uh, you know he's gone. He took the night. Well, just send him a wire. He'll be waiting at the station when you get into Albany. Now, go on. What? Well, Look, why doesn't that guy know, have a phone so put in up, there? Walter, maybe get wouldn't... going, Hildy. Get going, get going. What is that with you? Wait a minute. Now, look, honey, can't you understand? I'm trying to do something noble for once in my life. Now, get out of here before I change my mind. Come well, on. Walter, this is tough listen, enough now. Just a minute. Uh, well, send the fellow a wire. He'll be waiting when you get in. Now, come on. Who'll write the story? I'll do it myself. Won't be half as good as you can do it. What's well, the difference? It's my story. I'd kind of like to think that it would... Oh, at last, oh, I Duffy. get it, Walter. The same old act, isn't it? Try to push me out of here thinking I'll be stupid enough to want to stay. No, I know I deserve that, Hilly. Wait a minute, Duffy. But this is one time you're wrong. Look, honey. When you walk out that door, part of me will go right with you. But a whole new world's going to open up for you. I made fun of Bruce and Albany and all that kind of thing. You know why? Why? I was jealous. I was sore because he could offer you the kind of life I can't give you. Well, That's uh, what you want, honey. I, uh, I could stay and do the story and take the train in the morning. Oh, just make that it. much come difference. Come on, come on. Goodbye, dear, and good luck. Oh, Duffy. Hello, now, this is how it goes so far. <laughs> Oh, just a minute. Hello? Who? Hilty Johnson? No, she just left. I'm still here. I can take it. Hang on a minute. Hilty Johnson speaking. The 4th Precinct Duff. Police Station? Well, put him on. Bruce, I thought you were on your way to Albany. What for? For having counterfeit money. Counterfeit money? <clears throat> Hold on a minute, Duffy. Well, where did you get it? I gave it to 
Oh, all right, I'll try and do something about it. Oh, honey. Honey, don't, don't cry, please. Oh, come on, I didn't mean to make you cry, honey. What's the matter with you? You never cried before. Really? I honey. thought you were really sending me away with Bruce. I didn't know you had him locked up. I thought you were on the level for once. I thought you were just standing by and letting me go off with him and not doing a thing about it. Oh, come on, honey. What do you think I was, a chump? I, mean, I thought you didn't love me. Oh, what were you thinking, with? I don't know. Well, what are you standing there gawking for? Right. We have to get him out of jail. Send Louis down with some honest money and send him back to Albany where he belongs. Oh, sure, sure. Ah, oh, Duffy, everything's changed. Tell Louis to stand by. We're coming over the office. No, don't worry about the story. Hilda's going to write it. Of course, she's not quitting. She never intended to. We're going to get married. Oh, <laughs> can we go on a honeymoon this time? Sure. Over? Hey, Duffy, you can be managing editor. No, no, not permanently. Just for the two weeks we're away on the honeymoon. Oh, what? I don't know where we're going. Where are we going? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, Duffy. Two whole weeks, Walter. Sure, you've earned it. What? Yeah. What? Strike? What strike? Where? Albany? Well, I know it's on the way, Duffy, but All I can't right. ask you well, to... Honeymoon in Albany. Yeah, okay, Duffy. <laughs> well, isn't that a coincidence? We're going to Albany. I wonder if Bruce can put us up and say, why don't you carry that in your hand?